I got the horse right here, the name's Paul Revere, and here's a guy who says if the weather's clear, can do, can do, this guy says the horse can do, if he says the horse can do, can do, can do. I paid the Valentine, the little morning line, this guy has got skipped bigger at five to nine, but look at him, he's he's got his boy on your dice, your horses. Pause and think before it is too late. You are in danger. I am not speaking of the prisons and the gallows, but of the greater punishment that awaits you. Repent before it is too late. Just around the corner is our little mission, where you are always welcome to seek refuge from this jungle of sin. Come and speak to me. Do not think of me as Sergeant Sarah Brown, but as Sarah Brown, your sister. Join me, brothers and sisters, in resisting the devil, and we can put him to flight forever. Just remember, it's the Save a Soul mission, located at 409 West 49th Street. Open all day and all night with a special prayer meeting this Thursday. Poor Miss Sarah, what a wire refined doll like her is mixed up in the mission dodge. She is a beautiful doll, all right, with 100% eyes. Oh. Too bad such a doll as her wastes all her time being good. How's she gonna make any money from that? Maybe she owns a piece of the mission. Yeah. Hey, Benny Sulstry. Hey, Harry the Horse, how you doing? Yeah, hey, yeah. you know Nicely Nicely Johnson. Yeah, yeah, how goes it? Nicely Nicely, how thank you. you hey, uh, tell me about Nathan Detroit. He got a place for his crap game yet? Uh, we don't know yet. The heat is on. He's still looking for a place. Well, uh, tell him I'm loaded. I'm looking for action. I just acquired 5,000 potatoes. 5,000 bucks? Where did you acquire it? I collected the reward of my father. I hope Nathan finds a place really soon because we got all these players in Lieutenant town. Lieutenant Brannigan! Why, Mr. South Street is Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York Police Department. A pleasure. Any of you guys seen Nathan Detroit? Which Nathan Detroit would, would that be? 
I mean, the net in Detroit has been running a flood and crap game around here. Get the way with it by moving it to a different spot every night. And why would you ask us this, Your Honor? Because I know you three bums work for Detroit, rustling up customers for his crap game. <laughs> we do? Yeah. Oh. And you can tell him for me. I know right now. He's running around trying to find a spot, but nobody's going to give him a spot because they know Brannigan here is breathing down their neck. Fellas, I'm having terrible trouble. Everybody's scared on account of that lousy Brannigan, and I can't see Hiding. something wrong, Mr. Detroit. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Uh, I hope you don't think I was talking about you. There are other lousy Brannigans. <laughs> I was just telling your colleagues here about your crap game. I suspect you're having trouble finding a place. Well, the heat is on, as you must know, from the fact that you now have to live on your salary. <laughs> Nate, Nate, did you find a place yet? What does that cop want from me? What am I, a sex maniac? I merely provide a crap game for some people looking for some action, in return for which I take a small cut off the top. Is that a crime? Yeah. Nate! Did you find a place? Did you find a place for the kids? Did I find a place? Did I find... Yeah, I found a place. We'll be having the crap game tomorrow night in the Radio City Music Hall. Well, how are you going to fix the ushers there? I tried all the regular places. The back of the, cig the cigar store, the funeral parlor. Nate, you said once there might be a chance at the Biltmore Garage. I was over to the Biltmore Garage. Spoke with Joey Biltmore himself. He said he might take a chance and let me use the place. If I give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash. He won't take my marker. Your marker's no good. What do you mean? Hey, ooh. A marker ain't just a piece of paper that says, I owe you one thousand dollars, sign Nate in Detroit. A marker is like a pledge, which a guy can welch on it. It's like not saluting the flag. My marker is as good as gold. Only Joey Biltmore don't think so. It, it don't seem possible, me without a livelihood. Why? I've been running the crap game ever since I was a juvenile delinquent. Nate, can't you do something? What can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. And do you know what day today is? It is mine and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Yeah. We've been engaged 14 years. Nate, concentrate on the game. The town's up to here with high rollers. Look, the Greek's in town. Brandy bottle beats. Grand Slam! I know! I can make a fortune, but where can I have the game? The Biltmore Garage wants a grand, but we ain't got a grand on hand. And they've now got a lock on the door of the gym at PS84. There's the stock room behind McCloskey's bar. But Mrs. McCloskey ain't a good scout. And things being how they are, the back of the police station is out. So the Billboard Garage is the spot. But the 1,000 bucks we ain't got. Why, it's good old reliable Nathan, 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 Detroit. If you're looking for action, he'll furnish the spot. Even when the heat is on, it's never too hot. Not for good old reliable Nathan, where it's always just
Gentlemen, do not worry. Nate Detroit's crap game will float again. My boys will let you know where it is. That's great, Nate. Say, you know who else is looking for action? Sky Masterson. Sky Masterson's in town. Sky Masterson? Now there's the highest player of them all. Higher than the Greek? Higher than anybody. Why do you think they call him Sky? That's how high he bets. I once saw him bet $5,000 on a cockroach. And another time he was sick, only he wouldn't take penicillin on the account he bet 10 C's that his temperature would go to 104. Did it? Did it. He's so lucky, it went to 106. Good old Sky. <laughs> hey, maybe you could borrow the thousand from Sky. Uh, nah, not Sky. With him, that kind of money ain't lending money. It's betting money. So why don't I bet him? Well, yeah. Why don't I bet him a thousand on something? You would bet with Sky Masterson? I ain't scared. I'm perfectly willing to take the risk. Providing I can figure out a bet on which there's no chance of losing. He likes crazy bets, like which lump of sugar a fly will sit on, or how far can you kick a piece of cheesecake? Cheesecake. Ooh, ooh. Run over into Mindy's restaurant and ask him how many pieces of cheesecake he sold yesterday, and also how many pieces of strudel. Okay, how much cheesecake and how much strudel? What do you want to know for? Just find out. Now beat it. He comes out of lady. If she hears I'm running the crap game, she'll never set foot on me again. Hello, Nathan, darling. Adelaide. Pigeon. You go on ahead, girls. Order me a tuna fish on rye and a chocolate sundae with tomato ketchup and mayonnaise. You, Adelaide. <laughs> We gotta get back to the hot box. You still rehearsing? Yeah, that slave driver Charlie, he's been rehearsing this all morning. And finally I says to him, I says, look, Charlie, I gotta get out of here and get something to eat. I'm starving. And he says, you don't wanna get nothing to eat. You just wanna sneak out and meet that cheap bum, Nate in Detroit. So what'd you say to him? I says, I'll meet whomever I want. Well, don't upset yourself. How's your cold? It's much better, thank you, Nathan. Here, happy anniversary. A present? For me? I hope you like it. A belt. <laughs> Read the card. Sugar is sweet, and so is jelly. So put this belt around your belly. <laughs> That's so sweet. Adelaide, uh, about your present. I was going to get you a diamond wristwatch with a gold band and two rubies on the side. Oh, Nathan, you shouldn't have. It's all right. Uh, I didn't. I I'm sorry. It's OK. I kind of like it when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. One of these days, I'll be in the money, and you'll be in more mink than a mink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Nathan, I can do without anything. Just so long as you don't start running your crap game again. Oh, <laughs> crap game? What an absurd thought. <laughs> Yesterday, Mindy sold 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. More strudel than cheesecake? That's great. Nathan, what's that about? Oh, nothing, honey. Hey, hey, any news yet? Not yet, Harry. I'll let you know. Okay. Nathan, what was that? His wife's having a baby. So what's he asking you for? He's nervous. It's his first wife. <laughs> Listen, Adelaide, I'm expecting a fella, and I know you're hungry. Nathan, are you trying to get rid of me? No, I just don't want your sandwich to get soggy. Now, fellas, why don't you take Adelaide here to the drugstore? You see, honey, you're sick, and it's across the street, and there's a bunch of open manholes around. I understand, Nathan. You're just the sweetest person. Bye-bye. Hey, Masterson, great to see you, Sky. Nathan, you old promoter, you. Glad to see you, you look great. Feel great. Two wonderful weeks out west of Nevada, beautiful scenery, healthful climate, and I beat him for 50 G's at Blackjack. 50 G's? You gonna be in town long? No, flying to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yeah, there's a lot of action down there. You wanna come with me? Nah, I got stuff to do. Well, Meantime, why don't we drop over into Mindy's, have a piece of cheesecake or something. I hear they sell a lot of cheesecake. No, I'm not hungry. Tell me, how's Miss Adelaide? Fine, fine. Still dancing at the hot box. Well, I suppose one of these days you'll be getting married. We all gotta go sometime. But we can fight it, Nathan. Guys like you and me you gotta remember that pleasant as a doll's company may be, she must always take second place to aces back to back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me, you hungry yet? We can run over into Mitty's, have a piece of cheesecake or strudel or something. No, I think I'll go get the late results. Oh, but you will admit that Mindy's has the greatest cheesecake in the world. Yeah, I'm quite partial to Mindy's cheesecake. Oh, wait. And yet, there are some people who prefer his strudel. Offhand, which do you think he sells more of? The cheesecake or the strudel? Well, I never give it much thought, but if everybody's like I am, I'd say Mindy sells far more cheesecake than strudel. For how much? Huh? For how much? 
Nathan, I, I never knew you to be a betting man. You always take your percentage off the top. Well, for old times' sake, I thought I'd give you a little action. I'll bet you $1,000 that yesterday, Mindy sold more strudel than cheesecake. Nathan, let me tell you a story. When I was a young man, about to go out into the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. He says like this, son, the old guy says, I am sorry that I am unable to bankroll you to a very large start, but not having any potatoes to give you, I'm now going to stake you to some very valuable advice. One of these days in your travels, you're going to meet a guy that's going to bring to you a nice brand new deck of playing cards on which the seal has not yet been broken. And this guy, he's going to bet you that he can make the jack of spades jump out of the deck and squirt cider in your ear. But son, do not bet this man, for as sure as you stand there, you will wind up with an ear full of cider. Now, Nathan, I don't claim that you have been clocking Mindy's cheese. Oh, now you don't think that I would do something. However, if you're really looking for action, I bet you the same thousand that you cannot tell me the color of necktie that you have on. Well? No bet. Blue. What a crazy color. Hey, Nate, we took Adelaide to the drugstore. Don't store. bother me. Hiya, Sky. Good. How's it with you fellas? Uh, nicely, nicely. Uh, Nathan, we took Adelaide to the drugstore, and she says for you to be sure and pick her up after the show at the hot box, and don't be late. Yes, dear. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes, yes <laughs> dear. There's husband talk if I ever heard it. Nathan, you are trapped. In Adelaide, you have found the type of doll that is most difficult to unload. But I don't want to unload her. I love Adelaide. And besides, a guy without a doll. If a guy does not have a doll, who would holler at him? No, a doll is a necessity. I'm not putting the rap on dolls. I'm just saying a guy should have them around when he wants them around, and they are easy to find. Not dolls like Adelaide. Figuring weight for age, I'd say all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> then how come you're going to Havana alone without one? I like to travel light, but... If I choose to take a doll with me, there is a large assortment available. Not real high class dolls. Any doll, you name her. Any doll, and I name her? Will you bet on that? Will you bet a thousand dollars? And if I name a doll, you'll take it to Havana tomorrow? You gotta bet. I name her. Her? Cider! <laughs> <laughs> and rip up Broadway from end to end. Do you take centers here? Indeed we do, Sarah. How do you do? The name's Abernethy. Au revoir, Abernethy. Sky Masterson. What's wrong? Now, what is the trouble? My heart is heavy with sin. Oh, you poor man. I've wasted years of my life in gambling and evil betting, but suddenly I realize the terrible things betting can lead to. Agatha, coffee. Didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Uh, possibly. I've been wandering around trying to get the courage to come here. And you're willing to give up gambling? Oh, well, gladly. I would have never started gambling in the first place had I not fallen in with evil companions who were always offering me sucker bets. Here, young man. Oh, thank you. You know, it makes me feel good just to talk to you people. Well, you just go right on talking to Sister Sarah and you'll be all right. I'm glad you found us. Well, the Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Very good, young man. I wish we could find more sinners like you. You know, we're out there every day trying. Well, maybe you should try the night time. How's that? As a former sinner, I happen to know the best time to find sinners is between midnight and dawn. Maybe you should try them in an all-night session against the devil. A good suggestion, Brother Masterson. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Coffee is so good. Sometimes I wonder why it isn't a sin. <laughs> the 
fine old gentleman. I suppose he sort of looks after you? We look after each other. Uh huh. I suppose if one of you goes someplace, the other goes along? Yes, of course. Of course. Here's a pamphlet I think you should read. It will give you a good deal of comfort. Thank you. And we'll be holding a midnight prayer meeting this Thursday, which I'm sure you will want to attend. I'm sure. Uh, Miss Sarah, I hope I'm not getting out of line here, but I think it's wonderful to see a pretty doll, uh, a nice-looking lady like you, sacrificing herself for the sake of others, staying here in this place. Tell me, do you ever go anyplace else? Travel or something? I would like to go to Africa. <laughs> well, that's a bit far, but there are a lot of wonderful places just a few hours from New York by plane. You ever been on a plane? No. Oh, it's wonderful. Here's another pamphlet I think you should read. Uh, thank you. Of course, I'll need a lot of personal help from you. My heart is as black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. I'll be speaking at this Thursday's prayer meeting. I need private lessons. Why don't we have dinner or something? I think not, Mr. Masterson. I'm uh, sorry, just blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. <laughs> hey, that's wrong. What's wrong? That's not Proverbs, it's Isaiah. It's Proverbs. <laughs> sorry. No peace unto the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 21. Isaiah? Isaiah. There are two things been in every hotel room in this country. <laughs> Sky Masterson? and the Gideon Bible. I must have read the good book 10 or 12 times. You read the Bible 12 times? Well, what's wrong with the Bible? Besides, in my business, the strangest information frequently comes in handy. I once won five G's on a parlay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I, I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, lying's a sin. Look. <laughs> I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five, the rest will follow. You need sinners, don't you? We're managing. <laughs> Let's be honest, this mission is laying an egg. Why don't you let me help you? I'll bet I can fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. I'll make you a proposition. When is this big meeting of yours? Next uh, Thursday? I will personally guarantee to fill that meeting with one dozen genuine sinners. I will also guarantee that they will sit still and listen to you. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. Here. What's this? Sky Masterson's marker for 12 sinners. Don't think it's good? Ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. I'll pick you up at noon tomorrow for dinner. At noon? It'll take some time to get there. To get where? To my favorite restaurant. And where is that? El Cafe Cubana in Havana. El Cafe Cubana, Havana? Well, where do you want to eat? Howard Johnson's? <laughs> Havana? Well, why not? The plane gets us there in five hours, back the same night, and the food is great. I now realize, Mr. Gambler, that when you were describing the blackness of your heart, you didn't do yourself justice. And I now realize, Sister Sarah, that no matter how beautiful a sergeant may be, she is still a sergeant. Please go away. Why don't you change your pitch, Sarge? Come to the mission, one and all. Except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate anybody. Except me. <laughs> I'm glad to see it's just me personally and not all guys in general. It's nice to think that somewhere in the world, there's a guy who might appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what this guy will be like. He will not be a gambler. I am not interested in what he will not be. I'm interested in what he will be. Don't worry. I'll know. For I've imagined every bit of him, from his strong moral fiber, to the wisdom in his head, to the homely aroma of his blood. You have picked yourself a Scarsdale Galahad, the breakfast-eating Brooks Brothers type. Yes. And I shall meet him when the time is ripe. You got the guy all figured out, huh? I have. All figured out, including what he smokes. All figured out. Oh, no. And you'll know at a glance 
dance by the two pair of pants. Suddenly I'll know when my love comes along. I'll know then and then. I'll know at the sight of her face how I care, how I care, how I care. And I'll stop and I'll stare and I'll. Be sure to drop in again in case you want to take a crack at the other cheek. Is this the Biltmore Garage? Let me speak with Joey Biltmore. Who's this? Nate in Detroit. This is Joey. What do you want? Uh, Joey, I'm calling about the, uh, you know. The what? The crap game. The what? The crap game. Wait a minute. I got that. Well, hurry it up, will you? Sorry, the dice game. Well, look, Joey, is it all right if I use your place tomorrow night? I'll have the money tomorrow. Joey, if you're going to take that attitude, I'll just have the game someplace else. Where else can I have it? 
Look, Joey, the dough is guaranteed. What I lie to you? Yes. Look, I'm getting you from Sky Masterson. How'd you know? It's a bet. I can't lose. I, I made a bet he could not take the uh, doll to Havana. Where does she go? She don't go no place. That's how I know I'm going to win. Don't be so sure. It ain't a horse. It's a doll. But, Joey... Joey, you've known me a long time. Well, I can't talk about it no more. I, I gotta meet Adelaide at the hot box. Just, just one thing. Can I at least tell the guys the game's gonna be at your place? Fine. You'll get it. Goodbye. I hope you get stabbed by a Studebaker. <laughs> For the grand finale of our Round the World Review, the hot box takes you down on the farm with our star, Miss Adelaide, and the hot box farmerettes. Joey Biltmore, I like the ring is Hello, Nathan, darling. Hello, Pie Face. How are you, handsome? 
Fine. What you got there? A book. A book? You always read books. You'll become a regular bookie. <laughs> Nathan, this is very interesting. The doctor gave it to me. I went to him about my cold. How is your cold? It's the same. So he asked me how long I'd had it, and I told him for a long time. And I told him I thought it was on account of my dancing with hardly any clothes on, which is what I usually wear. And so he told me to read the book. He thought it might be due to psychology. You haven't got that, have you? <laughs> Nathan, this is the kind of psychology that tells you why girls do certain things. Oh, well, would it tell you what kind of a doll would go for a certain kind of guy, which you wouldn't think she would do so? What do you mean? Um, just for instance, there's uh, certain types of dolls that you can almost bet wouldn't go for certain guys. Nathan, you can never be sure. No matter how terrible a fellow may seem, you can never be sure that some girl won't go for him. Take us. Yeah. You know, Nathan, starting next week, I'll be getting a raise. And, well, with what I'll be making, I wondered what you would think if, well, maybe we could finally get married. Well, of course we're going to, sooner or later. I know, Nathan. <coughs> but I'm starting to worry about Mother. Your mother? What about your mother? Well, Nathan, this is something I've never told you before, but my mother, back in Rhode Island, she thinks we're married already. Why would she think a thing like that? Well, I couldn't be engaged for 14 years, could I, Nathan? People in Rhode Island don't do that. They get married. Then why is it such a small state? <laughs> so anyways, Nathan, I wrote her that I was married. You did, huh? Uh-huh. And then, after about two years... What, after about two years? We had a baby. You told your mother we had a baby. I had to, Nathan. She wouldn't have understood if we hadn't. What type baby was it? It was a boy. I named him after you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So, where's little Nathan Jr. supposed to be now? Oh, he's in boarding school. I wrote her that he won the football game last Saturday. I wish I had a bet on it. <laughs> well, Nathan, that's not all, Nathan. Don't tell me. He's got a little sister. Well, Mother believes in big families. <sighs> Just give me the grand total. Five. Your mother must be a glutton for punishment. Well, Nathan, now we're going to get married and it won't be a lie anymore. Adelaide, how could you do such a thing? And to a nice old broad like your mother. But Nathan, you don't even know my mother. But I'll be meeting her soon. And what do I tell her? What do I tell her I did with the five kids? Traded them to the Phillies or something? What are we going to do? We could get married. Uh, marriage ain't something you jump into like it's a <laughs> kettle of fish. We ain't ready. I'm ready, Nathan. What do you think I got in this box? Nathan, what do you think I got in this box? Sally's Wedding Shop. <laughs> I can't guess. It's a wedding veil, Nathan. I've had it for three years. I've never shown it to you because it's bad luck. You want to see it? It's bad luck. So anyways, Nathan, I have the wedding veil. All we need now is our license and blood test. A uh, what? Blood test. It's the law. For the city. First they close my crap game, then they open my veins. Nathan, you're not planning on running your crap game again, are you? Yeah, late. How can you even think such a thing? Why do you think I give up the crap game? It's because I love you, and I want us two to be the happiest married couple that there is in the world. Yoo-hoo! Oh, yoo-hoo! Has anybody seen an earring round here? I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> you! I got all dolled up tomorrow night for Society Max, and he breaks it on account of your dopey old crap game. Honest Adelaide, I pity you. Oh, oh. look at here, here it is. Oh. Adelaide, look Ta-da. at me, I'm on my knees. Oh, get up. It reminds me of your stupid crap game. Look, you're getting yourself all upset. You and I are going to be all right. After all, we love each other. And we're going to get married. I don't believe you anymore. But it's true. Look, you'll feel better tomorrow. Come on, let's see that old smile. That's my girl. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> it says here, the average unmarried female, basically insecure, due to some long frustration may react
with psychosomatic symptoms. Difficult to endure, affecting the upper respiratory tract. In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold, a place and can develop a cold. You can spray her wherever you figure the streptococcus. Just in the legal sense, shows a neurotic tendency. See note. See note. Oh, see note. <laughs> okay. With chronic organic symptoms, toxic or hypertense, involving the eye, the ear, the nose, the throat. Just from wondering whether the wedding is on or off A Pison can develop a cough You can feed her all day with the vitamin A and the bromo free But the medicine never gets anywhere near where the trouble is And she's getting a kind of a name for herself And that name ain't he's A Pison can develop a cough She's mad at him again. That Miss Adelaide, she's always taking his mind off of honest work. You know, it's a shame that a smart businessman like Nathan had to go and fall in love with his own fiance. <laughs> Benny, that is his weakness. And I'm told it is a worldwide weakness. Look. What's played at the Roxy? I'll tell you what's played at the Roxy. A picture about a Minnesota man so in love with a Mississippi girl that he sacrifices everything and moves all the way to Biloxi. That's what's played in the Roxy. What's in the Daily News? I'll tell you what's in the Daily News. A story about a guy who bought a ruby for his wife with what otherwise would have been his union dues. That's what's in the Daily News. What's happening all over? I'll tell you what's happening all over. Guys sitting at home by a television set who used to be something of a rover. That's what's happening all over. Love is a thing that has linked them. And it looks like nature's just a 
just another victim. Yes, sir. When you see a guy with the stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some dog. When you spot a John Wayne Mountain train, chances are he's insane. It's only a John can be for a Jane. When you meet a gent, pay it all kinds of rent for a flat that can flatten the Taj Mahal. Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than think you should have paid him a lot more attention. Yes, well, you know, he did attend every street meeting we had this morning. He must be interested in our work. Very. By the way, Sarah, you spoke beautifully this morning. No, I can't reach these people. I never should have volunteered for this post. Well, let's get some lunch. And I was going to convert Broadway all by myself. I was going to have these gamblers just begging to come to the mission. Good morning, Sergeant Sarah. General Cartwright, we didn't know you were coming to town, General. I got in town early this morning. I have spent the last hour trying to find you. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been holding extra street meetings, trying to stimulate interest. Good morning, General. Well, good morning, General. Good morning, Sarah. There's something I want to talk to you about. Won't you come have some lunch with us? No, dear, I don't have time. There's so many calls that I need to make. Sarah. We at headquarters have come to a definite conclusion. We have decided to close this branch of the mission. Oh, no. Well, close the mission? But, General, please, someone can do good here, and if I can't. Sarah, there's so many calls on us. There's so many other places where our work is really needed. But we're doing so much better now. Yes, and we've announced a big meeting for tomorrow night. You've announced a meeting, but will anyone come? Will anybody be here? Uh, pardon me, I couldn't help but overhearing. General, my name is Sky Masterson, former center. How do you do? How do you do? General, I, I wish to protest the closing of this mission. I think that Miss Sarah could be a big success here. I'm so glad to hear you say that, but I'm not so certain. <laughs> a dollar will get you ten. What? Uh, General, might I make a suggestion? Yes. Uh, why don't you come to the big meeting tomorrow night and find out for yourself? Don't you think that would be a good idea? If I thought the mission had a chance. General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's get 
your red carnations? Remember, nobody would be let into the game without they got the red carnations. It's like a, a, a password. Okay, but where's the game? I'll tell you in a minute. Nate, is it all set? Can I tell the guys that we're going to the Biltmore Garage? No, I gotta stall him for a while. Joey wants his dough first. Uh, it's 11 o'clock. The guys won't hang around much longer. So sue me. I'll live nicely at my hotel to wait for the money from Sky. It'll be there. So where's the dough? It ain't come yet. I told you to wait for it. Uh, I had to get some groceries. I was feeling a little faint. Go back to the hotel and wait for the money from Sky. And don't come back here without it, even if you starve to death. Okay, Nate. Hey, where's the game, Detroit? Hey, Harry the Horse, how's life in Brooklyn? Uh, Detroit, if you do not have no place for your game, tell us, and we'll seek elsewhere for entertainment. Take it easy, Harry. Detroit, I hope you will not spoil our evening. And as much as I happen to be entertaining a very prominent guest tonight, who I think you might have heard of, his name happens to be Big Julie from Chicago. Well, how do you do, Big Julie? <laughs> Uh, welcome to our fair city where, as you know, the heat is on. But just be patient. You'll get some action. Hey, Julie, what do you say? Should we stick around or should we blow? I came here to shoot crap. Let's shoot crap. Sure, sure. Nathan, Nathan. If you do not have no crap game tonight, I'm sure Big Julie will be considerably displeased. And you do not want to displease Big Julie. As you can find out from those citizens who at one time or another displeased him. So I must admit, it's kind of hard to find such citizens in view of the fact that they're no longer around and about. Hey, you don't think I'd be so rude as to displease a gentleman like Big Julie here? Big Julie, believe me when I tell you that when Nate in Detroit... <laughs> Nate in Detroit... When Nate in Detroit arranges something, you can count on it to... Well, interesting gathering indeed. Cream of society. Angie Docs, Society Max, Rusty Charlie, Liver Lip Louie, hey, add a horse all the way here from Brooklyn. And, pardon me, I'm very bad on names, but your face looks familiar. Mind telling me where you're from? East Cicero, Illinois. And, uh, what do you do there? I'm a scoutmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't ever help my mother across the street. She's lovely. She looks like the male chorus from Blossom Time. What's the case? Well, we, uh, you see, it's like this. Uh, it's a party. Yeah. Indeed, what kind of party? Goodbye, girls. See you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, it's a bachelor dinner. Nathan's getting married. <gasps> What? That's correct, Lieutenant. It's a bachelor dinner. Nathan's getting married. Yeah. That's right. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody cannot deny. But Nathan, darling, why didn't you tell me? Oh, it was a surprise. <laughs> but I never thought it was a bachelor dinner. Indeed, when I saw you standing here with all these fine gentlemen, I thought oh, that it was a... it's a bachelor party. It's a bachelor dinner. Yes, sir, a bachelor party. <laughs> Just think, after 14 years, I'm finally going to be Mrs. Nate in Detroit. Time certainly does fly. <laughs> Tell me, Nate, when's a happy day? Oh, when will when it be, Nate? good fellows are nice enough to give you a bachelor's dinner. You should at least be able to tell them the wedding day. Well, we need time for license and blood tests. Gee, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could elope tomorrow night after the show at the Hot Box? Adelaide, we need time for a license. You could elope. What? Yeah, you could drive down to Maryland. What's the name of that town? Uh, Pimlico. Not Pimlico, no, Nathan. I'm talking about Elkton. Why, they'll marry you right away there, and they don't even ask for a blood test. Ain't that unhealthy. Hey, Nate, that's a great idea. Look, you can use my getaway car. <coughs> my, my Buick. Oh, Nate, let's do it. Well... What the heck? <laughs> my congratulations, too, Nate. I just hope there's nothing in her Reddit. Oh, Nathan, I'm so excited. I've got so much to do before we elope tomorrow night. You'll be at the show at the Hot Box, right? I'll have a table reserved and I'll be all dressed up in whatever it is you elope. Oh, gee, I'll have to wire my mother. Only what'll I tell her? Just send the telegram, uh, date it back. I'll just wait till we have five kids. 
It won't take us long. <laughs> Nathan, you are indeed a lucky fellow. Beautiful doll indeed. Don't you agree, Big Julie? Tell me, how long you've known the doll? Fourteen years. What's you crap? Nate, we gotta find a place. How can I? The money from Sky ain't come yet. Well, well, maybe it ain't gonna come. Maybe he took the doll to Havana. He couldn't have. How could? She could not have gone. <laughs> mission in Cuba? Come on! Where to? To see the oldest. Don't miss the dungeons. We're prisoners. We're thrown to the sharks. Sounds like a million laughs. He's lying down. How about a drink? A milkshake, please. Dulce de leche. to act as a preservative. You know, this would be a wonderful way to get children to drink milk.
take it easy. It's <laughs> over and the, you're still the champ. Hey, are you all right? Am I all right? Ask me how do I feel? Ask me now that we're cozy and clinging. Well, sir, I can say as if fire were a bell, I'd be ringing. From the moment we kissed tonight, that's the way I've just got to behave. Boy, if I were a lamp, I'd if we want to catch the plane back to New York. I don't want to go back to New York. I'm taking you back. You're no gentleman. Look, a doll like you doesn't need to get mixed up with a guy like me. <laughs> it's no good. I'm no good. You know why I brought you to Havana? I made a bet. It's how you met me in the first place. I made a bet. How else would a girl get to meet a gambler? Uh, come on. No, no. I gotta think what's best for you. You talk just like a missionary. Adelaide, how are you? I'm wonderful. The girls surprised me with a kitchen shower. They went to an all-night drugstore and surprised me with a kitchen shower. <laughs> That's wonderful. You know Miss Sarah? How do you do? Pleased to meet you. You know, Skye, we're eloping after the show tomorrow night at the Hot Box, Nathan and I. <laughs> Good luck. I'm so excited. I can't wait to be a housewife. I can't wait to try the kitchen. It's the only room I haven't tried yet. <laughs> Miss Adelaide sure seems happy. She's in love. Yeah, I guess so. What time is it? I don't know. Four o'clock. This is your time of day, isn't it? I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? It's so peaceful and wonderful. You're finding out something I've known for quite a while. My time of day is the dark time A couple of deals before dawn When the street belongs to the cop And the janitor with a mop And the grocery clerks are all gone When the smell of the rain 
comes up clean and fresh and cool and the street lamp light fills the gutter with gold that's my time of day my time of day and you're the only doll i've ever wanted to share it with me obadiah Obadiah, what's that? Obadiah Masterson. That's my real name. And you're the first person I've ever told it to. I've never been in Sarah, dear. Good morning, Brother Masterson. Good morning. Today we took your suggestion. We stayed out all night. We talked to several centers and, uh, Sarah, where have you been? I've been to Cuba. To Cuba? Well, you must be even more tired than I am. <laughs> I've ever seen a floating crap game run in full blast in a mission. Crap game? Hey, Sarah, you know I had nothing to do with this. Sarah. This never, I never should have gone with you. It was wrong. No, it wasn't. You went to help the mission. Did I? Will I see you tomorrow? Everyone is welcome at the mission. That's not what I mean. It's no good, Sky. You said it yourself. It's no good. Why not? What the hell kind of doll are you, anyway? I'm a mission doll! 